hi guys so welcome back to other games tutorial so today we are going to play slash reviewing hell hunter 2 damn soul um first of all thanks to tanker identity for providing the copy of this um game um <clears throat> honestly i really like this um I mean the storyline of Hellhunter. Um the last version I mean Hellhunter one I managed to complete until one hundred percent as you guys can see um that I uploaded and that playlist got one thousand plus plus one thousand four hundred something views which is very impressive. Thanks for your support guys and Today, yeah, I'm going to try to play this Hellhunter 2, which just released a few days ago. Hellhunter, Damned Soul. Move among the options in the main menu with the left and right arrow keys. Then press Control to select an option. So, my honest opinion about Hellhunter 1, the thing I don't like is basically when you, after you got tortured by Deus, and your entire inventory will gone. I mean, your blood vials and something, something like that you have before. No, actually, your item is not gone except for blood vials. Yeah. That's the thing that I don't like about Hellhunter 1, but else. About the gameplay is quite okay and um, the storyline is quite for me it's interesting. New game. So let's um, see what's new here. Load game. Credits. Exit game. So this menu is pretty um, pretty. <coughs> um, same like the. Hellhunter 1 Credits Credits here, so let's listen Hellhunter, Damned Soul A game by Giovanni De Bita, aka Tanker Rider Game design by Giovanni De Bita. Programming by Giovanni De Bita. Framework software by Massimo De Pasquale Story by Giovanni De Bita. Sound design, SFX, and music by Francesco Zaniboni, Giovanni De Bita, freesound.org, and Pro Sound Effects. Test by Jackson Blackford, Douglas Gallo, and Giovanni De Bita. Voice by David McCallion. Store icon art by Federico Fabri. Administrative direction by Mirko Venturi. Special thanks to Andrea D'Angelo. An audio game made and produced by Audio Games Association. Yeah, thanks David. Move em. Exit. Get new. Load. New game. So let's get in to the... The story of Elian, the vampire hunter, is about to start. You can skip cutscenes by pressing Control for two seconds. Move among the options in the pause menu with the left and right arrow keys. Then press control um, to select I'm an option. Sure, um, we'll Use the right and left arrow to explore the environment, forward and backwards. <coughs> Use the control key to examine to the interactive <coughs> elements, space to bar to open the pause see. menu, and the I key to continue. access the infantry. During battle, press the up arrow key to attack Press the left, right, or down arrow key to dodge. Use the spacebar to drink a blood vial and control to hear Elian's health amount. Very well. That is all you need to know in order to survive. Good luck. Our story takes place in our days, in some places located somewhere in Transylvania. In a world where technology has spread worldwide, Mankind can't even imagine that vampires and all the creatures of the night actually exist. Some of them have even managed to integrate into society. Elian is a Dampier. 
the son of a vampire and a human. He became a vampire hunter a long time ago. After failing to hunt Dracula, he has been chased by anti Noman, an invincible war machine that belonged to Dracula. He escaped for a long time until, with the help of Alucard, he managed to this destroy anti Noman. Uh, Alucard, story. the son of Dracula, is a dampier like him, and he wants to kill his father. That is the reason why he helped Elian. So they started an alliance. Some months ago, they started the preparations for their mission. They moved to the center of the nation. Those grassy lands in the middle of nowhere are perfect as a meeting point. So Elian and Alucard meet here each time they make some progress with the mission. Now they are ready for the next phase of their plan. Alucard told Elian that Dracula can count on advanced technologies due to his interests in science and technology that he cultivated for centuries, so he can track any information from the web, the internet that mankind created. They can't afford to be tracked by Dracula, so they never used any of it, not even a smartphone, nor will they use it starting from now. Alucard can count on some contact which provided him with some precious information. Inside the capital, in the secret archive of the government palace, there are top secret documents about vampires. Actually, that's not a surprise, but the fact is that those documents should contain some secret information about Dracula. Information that maybe not even Alucard knows. Elian's task is to enter the capital and sneak inside the government palace to obtain the document they are searching for. Alucard knows that it should take some time. Anyway, he says that inside the capital, he has a helper. Elian will be able to meet him during his stay inside the capital. Knocking at the door of his house and speaking Alucard's name will be enough to get shelter. Elian prepares to leave. Alucard will finish with the preparations. Alucard warns Elian that the plague which spread worldwide some months ago is about to even reach the capital. In fact, he's heard that something is happening in the capital. So Elian should stay alert. A place in the middle of nothing. There are few rocks and trees around here. You have reached meeting point. So, yeah. This is where we have started. Um, you can press space. You opened the menu page. And press backspace to go back to the map. Here you got extra and you got some menu to choose from. Life points. Life points to check your life. One hundred percent life points. He's in perfect condition. Experience points. Experience. Elian reached level one. Two thousand. Experience for the next level. Whoa, that was a lot. Inventory. My inventory, I guess it's empty. You opened the inventory page. No items in your inventory. Yeah. You opened the instru game progression instructions. Instruction is I think it's the combat instruction. You can skip cutscenes by pressing control. Oh. You can game progression zero percent. Battle background volume settings. 70%, 40%, 10 I'll put it to 10. Alert sound on quiet attacks. Alert sound, I'm not sure I will turn it on or not, but for now I'll just leave it because the sound is always similar like the deadly attack, so it may confuse me. So for the developer, I think you guys should have a different sound between this deadly alert and the quiet attack sound. Quit game. Life points. But yeah. You're back in the map. So let's explore what's here. Saving point. Got saving point. Tree. Tree. Medical kit. Medical kit. 
Rock. Alucard. To the capital. Saving point. You saved the game, Tree. Between tasks, Ellie intends to rest here, while sitting and laying his back against the trunk. Between tasks, Ellie intends to rest here. Um, I like to examine this thing, this thing multiple times, just in case if they have anything. Medical kit. Alucard usually puts some transfusion <coughs> bags inside the medical kit periodically. And based on what he says, he doesn't need them. He can rely on his personal supply of blood vials. So Elian just picks them up and transfers the blood inside the vials he creates, with the crystallization of his Dampier powers. This time there are three transfusion bags, so Elian gets three blood vials. Thank you. There's no transfusion rock. This rock is the place where Alucard sits during a break. This rock, Alucard. Alucard suggests to Elian to get some blood from the medical kit before leaving, in case he hasn't done it already. Alucard to the capital. So let's go. The capital is almost there. On the way, there's a narrow passage. On Elian's left, there's a ravine. Not much distance from it, there's a large mountain. Covered with trees. You have reached Road to the Capital. Signpost. The distance from the capital is a few kilometers. All the other places written inside the signpost don't interest Elian. Mountain. To outside the capital. Mountain. Most of the mountain is covered with trees, except the bottom. That part is just rock, but it's completely vertical. Also, the ravine which leads to that point is really deep. In other words, it's almost impossible to gain access to that mountain. To outside the capital, to the entrance. So let's go to the entrance. Elian enters the capital. It's actually less lively than he expected. Few people are around, and some of them are military forces. That would explain a thing or two. You have reached capital. Entrance. Burnt car. That car has been riddled by a machine gun. It's difficult to know if it has been burned down by some Molotov cocktail, or something else. That cut soldier. The soldier saw Elian coming from outside. Hence, he has no business with him. Seems like there's a civil war going on. Or so he says. The soldier saw Elian Bystander. That guy just stands near a wall with a vacuous gaze. The military forces aren't paying much attention to him. That guy just stands to the road to the capital. Two alleys. Helper's house. Burnt car. Helper's house. Two alleys. It doesn't seem like a recommended area. In the distance, Elian hears some voices. Farther away, he can hear some screams and also someone shooting a gun. You have reached capital, alleys, graffiti. Along the walls, it's full of images, but even more of political invectives and insults. Along the walls, it's full of images, but even more of political invectives and corpse. A guy lies on the ground next to a dumpster with his back on the wall. He's dead. Elian uses his power of hearing the voices of the dead and touches the body. His mind is still too blurry. Probably he died by overdose. 
A guy to the entrance. Overdose by what? Drugs? To the square. It's one of the most famous squares of the capital. It's very wide, and the cultural heritage is remarkable. Despite this, the mood is ruined by the shootouts nearby. People are escaping from military forces. At a certain point, Elian can see from a distance an innocent girl being hit accidentally by a stray bullet. She lies on the ground a few moments later. You have reached Capital Square. Saving point. You saved the game, Meta Guy. It's him! Meta Guy, a weirdo that used to give advice to Elian, greets him once more inside Blood Hut. Huh? He corrects himself with Hellhunter. To celebrate their meeting, he asks Elian if he remembers the advice he gave him. In case he forgot, he quickly tells him the most relevant. In short, to make a good exploration, Elian must check items and places more than one time, and eventually at a later time. For people it works exactly the same way. There's also another reminder for Elian, namely the act of turning around. If Elian explores a map going forward, and then he goes backward, that means he just turned around. The same happens if he first goes backward and then forward. Metaguy warns Elian about a new detail. Monsters might be able to attack in more than one way, and maybe even multiple times. There are more features he will be aware about, so he has to pay attention to the information he will obtain during his journey. Alright, thank you, Metaguy. It's him, soldier. The battle begins. The battle ends. So basically how did you fight this? Alien gains 50 experience points. Attack, Press control to continue. When they attack, you have to avoid to the opposite direction and uh, spam your up arrow key to attack them. Saving point. Meta guy. Girl. Alien checks the girl. There's nothing he can do. She died instantly. A few moments later, some steps get closer. It's a woman who is running towards the girl, calling her name with all her voice. Elian moves aside and doesn't say a word. The woman crouches next to the girl as blood flows from the corpse. She's shaking in pain. She won't stop crying. While the mother holds her dead daughter in her arms, and both get soaked in her blood, she swears revenge on the government, with a strangled voice. Elian leaves, clenching his fists so tight to get the blood out. That's the type of scene he hates the most. He's seen enough for today. As Alucard told him, there's a helper in the capital who knows him. Elian should search for his house. Soldier. No. The battle begins. 100% life points. The battle ends. Elian gains 50 experience points. Press can. Saving po Meta Guy. Soldier. To the alleys. To the government palace. Saving to the gov. The gate is closed and the military forces won't let anyone pass, no matter the reason, to the alleys. You have reached Capital South Alley, abandoned building. At the end of an alley there's a dead end. The wall seems like the side of an abandoned building. All the passages are completely shut down. So there's not much that Elian can do. South Alley. Just another alley. It's narrow and long. It leads to nowhere that would interest Elian. A back to the square. To the entrance. So I believe the helper house is here. 
You have reached Capital, Entrance, Helper's House. This should be the house of the Helper mentioned by Alucard. Elian knocks the door. A man opens the door. Obviously they don't know each other, yet, as Elian speaks Alucard's name, he invites Elian inside without saying another word. Two alleys to the helper's house. The house is quite modest. The furniture is normal, and the appearances too. Despite him somehow knowing Alucard, he really seems like an ordinary guy. You have reached Capital, Helper's House. Bookshelf. To the end, Bookshelf. The bookshelf is filled with books about recent history and politics. They cover many arguments and involve all the local political parties. So Elian can't figure out which party he votes for. The bookshelf. Medical kit. Elian looks at the helper. He says that there's no problem. He can take all the transfusion bags he wants. Elian wonders if that means he knows about Dampiers. Anyway, he gets two blood vials. Ooh. So now you're five? The medical kit is empty. Stair. The bedroom for guests is upstairs. Most of the house is on floor zero anyway. Cell phone. Stair. The bedroom. Cell. There's an obsolete cell phone on a small table. With that model, it's not possible to navigate on the internet. Just make calls and exchange SMS. Um, there's an obsolete cell phone on a small table. Oops, I With that model, it's not possible to navigate on the internet. Just make calls and exchange SMS. A measure against Dracula? Helper. The helper invites Elian to sit somewhere. The dinner will be ready in minutes. So they sit at the table and converse while eating. The guy is not asking anything about Elian, so he will do the same with the helper. But it's a shame since he will miss a chance to know more about Alucard. Elian would rather ask about the current situation of the capital. The helper starts from the latest elections, an extremist party, which gained support from people over the years, won the election. After some time, it suddenly took an authoritarian turn. Recently, he thinks they started to spread false rumors about incidents caused by rebels and terrorists. Moreover, the global spread of the plague appearing some months ago is just the perfect pretext to apply repressive and restrictive measures. So the Secret Service sequesters presumed terrorists and collaborators, while military forces allow to consolidate the state of things. And this is how an incident like the girl's death can happen. The Helper is clearly indignant about the situation, but Elian doesn't clearly understand what role he has in all of this. Perhaps he offers a shelter to people in need. Anyway, they finish dinner, and Elian goes upstairs to sleep. Elian is finally alone. He puts his stuff nearby, then he sits on the side of his bed. A few seconds later, someone appears from nowhere. It's an old acquaintance of Elian's. She's a vampire that captured Elian some time ago and tortured him for days. There's more. She's dead due to Elian, who bit her neck and drank all her blood in a moment of desperation. Since the day Elian killed Deus and drained her essence, she never stopped appearing to him in this way. She's used to getting in touch with him and teasing him with some comment. It's difficult for Elian to understand her current nature. It could be caused by his powers to interfere with the boundary between life and death, a power which, among many other things, allows him to hear the voices of the dead he touches. 
With her, it's different. Anyway, he never really knew exactly how that power works. She's always dressed the same way as that day. Her long, smooth legs quietly step forward. She stops next to Elian. From a perspective in which she can stare at him from above, she's even quite tall herself. She chuckles as Elian looks away from her. While asking him if he missed her, she sits next to him and slowly puts her hand on Elian's. The nail polish matches perfectly with the color of her hair, and her lips as well. He's gonna ignore her, so he lies on the bed with his head pointing towards the ceiling. She knows that he's sorry about that. She can't play with him anymore, even if now they are in the same position as one of those days. She slightly turns her head to the left. From here, Elian can see her back, her shoulders. Her long and soft scarlet hair covers most of her face, except for the nose and her red lips. The contrast of her pale skin makes them exalt further, and her hair almost acts like a frame for that sight. It's difficult not to watch. Not too far from here, another detail draws the attention. The mark of a bite which is engraved on her warm neck. Her lips slowly extend into a wide smile as she slightly opens her mouth. Her long and sharp canine teeth are exposed, those of a vampire. She laughs and looks again towards Elian, just in time to cross his gaze. Her blue eyes, surrounded from all that red, would draw the attention of anyone, like a full moon in a dark sky. She tells Elian that she knew that he likes that perspective. She did it on purpose. His gaze points again toward the ceiling. Now she gets on the bed as well. Then she stops, straddling Elian, who still ignores her. As her hands lay on his arms, she slowly leans towards him. While her hands slip towards his wrists, she asks Elian what's the matter. What's he thinking of? She points out that he never opposes her. He just lets her do what she wants and never responds to her words. She gets even closer. Her scarlet hair lies on his body. Her fingers caress Elian's face. As their noses touch, his gaze points elsewhere. Their lips are very close. Elian can feel again that weird sensation while touching her nose. It's like an ethereal body. She never tries to drag or push him, and maybe for the same reason, he doesn't try to free himself from her. Probably his body would just pass through her. Seems like he doesn't want to know the answer. She gets a bit nervous and tells Elian that he should look at her, look at her face, in her eyes, and that he knows why. Then she moves aside and sits again on the side of the bed. Elian manages to fall asleep somehow. As he wakes up he goes downstairs and it looks like something has happened. The helper tells him that the plague arrived in the capital. That happened too fast. Even worse, he heard that the web collapsed in the whole capital. What happened? As Elian could imagine, that led immediately to a disaster. He thanks the helper and gets out of the house. He doesn't even have time to take a few steps as a couple of men approach and stop him to tell him something. They look like some kind of men in black. They must be the secret service of the government. They ask Elian to follow them to chat for a bit. He's quite suspicious and a bit annoyed, but decides to follow them. 
They walk beyond the square and cross a large gate. Inside it, there's a great palace. It's the government palace. The palace inside is exactly as Elian would expect, expensive and luxurious. Around here, there's a continuous flow of state employees and influential people. There's also some guy that looks like the two men who are escorting Elian. After talking to someone nearby, they invite him to follow them upstairs. You have reached Government Palace, Floor Zero. Flag. A flag of the current governing party flies alone. This is a place which should be neutral, but looks like they don't give a damn. A flag to the square, to the mayor's room, to floor B1, flag, to floor B1. The Secret Service won't let him pass. This is an off-limits area. Access is granted only to authorized personnel. The Secret to the mayor's room. At the end of the path, they finally enter a room. It's the room of the mayor. He has a self-important attitude, but he also can't hide his concern about something. Probably it has something to do with the reason why Elian is here. The mayor invites him to sit. He must talk with Elian. You have reached Government Palace, Mayor's Room. Window. The huge window offers a wide view of the square. The huge window. Bookshelf. It is filled with books about history, geography and economics. Oh, economics. It is filled with gun. On his desk, there's a gun which is customized with some decoration. Elian can smell the slight scent of gunpowder coming from it. On his desk, Mayor to floors, window to Mayor. Elian sits as well. While the Mayor gesticulates nervously with his fingers, he starts to explain the situation, which matches with the info he got from the Helper about the plague and the web. There's more. This morning he received an email. The sender called themselves a group named The Witches. Even if it sounded like a bad joke and he wanted to ignore them, they wrote statements that were much too accurate. They also announced they were responsible for the current situation and threatened him with death. They won't restore the previous state of things unless the killers pay for their crimes. The mayor heard indirectly about Elian, following some rumor fairly spread around the nation about a vampire hunter. Not a good thing, considering that Alucard told him not to draw any attention, or Dracula could track their movements. The mayor, without wasting much time, asks Elian to find those witches and solve the problem. It looks like he doesn't even care about the request. Elian is here to find a secret document, but this is not the time. He will wait for a proper chance. Meanwhile, he accepts and will try to take a good look at the structure of the palace. First of all, Elian will investigate around the city in order to find a clue that will lead him to those witches. He expects Elian will finish the job quickly. He will talk to him to floor zero. Yeah, you stupid mirror. We just sit there and, in, and do nothing. You have to floor government to the mayor's room to floor the secret servant to the to the. You have re saved. You saved the game, Meta Guy Soldier. The battle begins. <laughs> The battle ends. Elian gains 50 experience points. Press 
Say Metaga soldier. The battle begins. The battle ends. Alien Say Met to the alleys, to the government pal save it to the alleys. You have reached capital, alley south, at, abandoned to the square, to the entrance. You're gonna go to the entrance and talk to talk to someone here. You have to, to capital bystander. A strange scent comes from him. Yeah. Perhaps he just smoked you weed to, or something. You have to talk to this guy. Perhaps it's just a stereotype, but Elian has a suspicion Again. that a witch hidden in town can survive with their most common activity. Selling herbs and medicine. He gives it a try and asks him where he bought what he just smoked. The guy nervously looks away and tells him that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Elian notices that he's looking at the soldiers. The guy is walking away but Elian needs an answer. You have to uh, press control again. Elian stops him by putting a hand on his shoulder. He tells him that he has nothing to do with the government. In fact, the bystander saw Elian going away with the secret services before. He adds that they stopped him because he comes from outside the capital, since the plague spread here. The guy has calmed down. It seems like it's a herbalist selling that stuff. They should be somewhere in the alleys. Elian thanks him and leaves. Alright. So let's go back to the alleys. Anyway, the bystander wants to be alone. Any interaction with other people, especially due to the plague, draws the attention of military forces. To the road to the cap at two alleys. You have reached capital, alleys. And we're gonna go to the South Alley. Here. As Elian searches for the herbalist, he can smell a particular scent of herbs. It seems to come from that door. Go up to the witch house. Elian opens the door. This is a shop. A herbalist's shop, to be precise. It looks antique and fascinating. Many rare flowers and aromatic herbs are scattered around. Furniture and decorations are made with wood. Many wicker baskets are placed above some table or are hung from the ceiling by a thin rope. The combination of scents, along with the visual impact, makes this place quite unique. Elian closes the door and takes a look at the woman. She's middle-aged, yet quite beautiful. Her skin looks smooth. More than the average. Aside from that, her gaze is what makes him know for sure that she's a witch. The woman stares at him for some seconds. Then she smiles and welcomes her new client. You have reached capital, witch house, tables. Many baskets are placed on the tables. Most of them contain flowers and herbs, but there are also other products like soaps, balms, ointments and other articles, which all look strictly handmade. Many baskets... You see, this woman is very creative. And she, she did the whole thing by her own head. Um, no, I don't know, I'm just joking. Amulets. On the highest part of the walls, there are many amulets. They are all handmade and crafted with many natural materials, like wood, leaves, and straw. There's also some made with the bones of animals. A few are a bit eerie. Elian can sense some actual magic coming from them. On the highest seats, 
There's some antique chairs around a round table. Seems like it's possible to enjoy a herbal tea with homemade biscuits while sitting there. Elian wouldn't mind seizing the opportunity. Unfortunately, it's not the right time for that. Such a shame. There's some antique chairs around a round table. Seems like it's possible. Door. The door is closed. Perhaps there's a storeroom behind it. Shop's owner to the alleys. Shop's owner. After looking around, Elian gets close to her. She's a bit surprised. He doesn't look like an ordinary customer. She asks how she can help him. Elian looks around for a second, and then he gets straight to the point. He asks her if she's a witch. He expects yes as an answer. Even if the woman is smiling, the same can't be said for her eyes. She takes some steps forward and looks Elian straight in his eyes. She replies, asking him if he's a dampier, for instance. Her hand was at the point of grazing Elian's face, but suddenly she had to stop and quickly withdraw it. Elian turns his head to his left and takes a look behind him. It's his scarlet mate who stands there quietly. It looks like the shop owner can't see her, but the other woman must have done something. What kind of glare could she have made? She admits she's a witch, but tells Elian that his nature is way more complicated than the simple fact of being a dampier. Elian asks her about the plague and the web. She has nothing to do with that. Her eyes are sincere. She says that perhaps he's looking for something else, like the group of witches located in the mountain next to the capital. Elian didn't expect to receive that information so easily, especially from a witch. He asks why she sold out her friends, but she smirks at that question. She replies that they are not her friends. Not anymore. Anyway, she won't provide further details. The mountain she's talking about can't be reached by a common human. Actually, not even by a common dampier. The witch tells Elian that the best way to reach that place is morphing into an animal with the help of a relic. That's the only way for a dampier. The witches can do that with a simple spell. Elian saw some particular object inside the shop, so he attempts to ask if she has any of them. The witch asks him to wait a second. Then she turns around and opens the door behind her. It's completely dark inside, but she moves comfortably inside it. Then she returns with something in her hand. It's the mummified paw of a wolf contained inside a transparent globe. That's her last relic at the moment, a wolf relic. With it, Elian would be able to morph into a wolf. He could try with that. Elian asks her what she wants in exchange. In fact, there's a little task that the witch would want to assign him. He just has to deliver a pack to someone. The address seems the same as the helper's house. Possible? Actually, the current situation really annoys her, since it heavily hinders her job, and it's better for a witch to not go around at the moment. It's no use to say that she doesn't want Elian to open the pack. With a smile, she tells him he would regret it. So Elian gets the pack and leaves. The witch is not in a hurry. Anyway, Elian will get the relic only after delivering the pack to the destination, which seems to be the helper's house. To the alleys. You have to the witch cap abandoned build to the square, to the entrance. You have read to the capital.
You have re- To the e helper. Elian shows the pack to the helper. They are both surprised by the situation. The helper gets the pack and puts it somewhere. Elian wonders what the content of the package is, but he won't ask since it's unlikely the helper will answer the question. The helper suggests to Elian not to do what he just did again with the same client, or the military forces will find it suspicious. Cell phone. Stare. Medical kit. The medical kit is empty. To the helper. To the entrance. You have re- To the hell capital. Two alleys. You have re- To the wit capital. You have re- To the sh capital. Which Elian tells her that he successfully delivered the pack. She's glad to hear that, and so the witch gives Elian the wolf relic. Elian can morph into a wolf with it and cover long distances with a leap. That allows him to reach new places. Also, Elian can use transform relics in battle to change from dampier shape to wolf shape. As a wolf, he will be able to deal more damage with his attacks. But on the other hand, he will receive more damage as well. The wolf is more suited for battles against heavy and armored monsters. To change from a shape to the other one, you have to press shift. While transformed, Elian won't be able to heal himself with blood vials. Door. Shop's owner. The witch tells Elian to come back any time. If she can somehow help, then she will be glad to. She won't mind even drinking some herbal tea with him. To the alleys. Thank you, witch. You have work. reached Capit to the witch. Abandoned built to the square. To the entrance. So I guess the ne de next destination will be the mountain, and <clears throat> I will start. You have reached capital. Entrance. The recording at the meeting point. To the helper's house, two alleys, to the road to the capital. Yeah, I guess that is a good way to stop. This should be the place that the witch indicated to Elian. In fact, that mountain is a perfect hideout. Inaccessible by foot and from vehicles. A wolf should be able to cover the distance between the road and the mountain with a leap. You have reached Road to the Capital. Signpost. The distance from the capital is a few kilometers. All the other places written inside the signpost don't in Mountain. To outside the capital. To the entrance. To the witch's lair. To, to out mountain. Most of the mountain is covered with trees, except the bottom. To outside, to the entrance, to outside the capital. So I'm back to meeting point and I'll save the game, and this is where I will end. You have reached meet saving point. You saved the game. Tree, medic, rock, medic. There's no trans. Out to the capital. You o quit game. Hell hunt egg. So here is part one, maybe. I don't know I will continue the playthrough but this is the <clears throat> um, my opinion so far it's good because you know as I said at the beginning I like this story po uh, this how your storyline and also the voice acting is good so yeah sometime to be honest sometime it got boring too if the speech are too long especially when at the scene just now where you're asleep and then the day is thing yeah. so i guess this is where i will stop um this video if you have anything just leave it in the comment box and see you in the next video